Good afternoon and welcome to the Road to Recovery. This is Marky once again on my Friday. Come here, baby. Come here. Life is always changing, you know. You can't help it. Everything changes. That, my friends, is the only constant in life. And this is Uffy. This is my 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 new little girl. Hang on, I just got to get a leash off here. You don't like that leash, do you? She's well, 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 well. Don't do that to me. Oh, you mean man? Don't lock me up. Right, so this is my, my little girl, my new one. Um, she was Michael's, but unfortunately she didn't fit in with the cat. So, um, yeah, it's my, uh, my little doggy now, my responsibility, a little foxy, as you can see. And she's a real little poo machine, aren't you? A eh? little mobile toilet on four legs. Yes, you are. And, uh, yeah, she's uh, a typical foxy, full of energy and nervous energy at that but she's a good dog and as you can see you know she she wants to be good don't you do you want to be good yeah this show is dedicated to um marjorie seaton who passed away sadly just the other day and uh, it breaks my heart she's um, probably the last of the old guard to go my my best friend keith and wayne's mum christine's mum she was a a very um good woman put up with a lot and um, she suffered a lot in her life um, they were very poor growing up you know mince and toast was choice that was a, was a top notch feed down there but we were grateful for it and um, Marjorie worked very hard all her life luckily she got into a little bit of money from a brother of hers at the end and was able to travel around the world uh, she's a very interesting woman she had um, impose herself upon people in the nicest possible way and uh, she'd often tell you to go and see someone and you'd rock up there and they'd have no idea who the hell she was <laughs> she just some stranger had wandered into their lives at some point but um, she was very good to us she looked after us looked looked over us like a guardian angel like so many women of that generation did you know pick up the pieces when we'd uh, destroyed everything around us and smashed ourselves up and They'd put us together again and keep us fed and keep an eye on us and say lots of prayers for us. They were good people and uh, it's a shame that they're gone and with the COVID lockdown I wasn't able to go to Marjorie's funeral and it's always really, really tough, you know, for people when they're in a situation like that and then they have a funeral to have to deal with. You can't find a priest, you can't find anyone. It's just, it's madness and it all fellow problem my friend Keith I feel for you mate um I know how tough it is under normal circumstances having just buried three of my family so you know I know how tough it is for you mate and my heart goes out to you but I'm here and we won't dwell upon the past you know we look to the future us boys and we talk about the rugby and getting liquored and having good fun and holidays and gold prospecting and things that we'll do in the future me and my little dog here so you know one life ends and another begins and and that is the way of things and it's important when we're dealing with you know mental health issues like the loss of loved ones that we get over things okay we don't let it consume us and drag us down for too long and distraction I find is a good thing and this little one she distracts me heaps um, so you know you find that sometimes distraction is a good thing it doesn't mean that you don't love those people anymore it just means that you're not being consumed by the dead and that you realize that life is for the living and it's our duty to go on and look after those around us who need us only dead people, we need us. You know, we have to be strong when we can and we will have our weak moments and there will be tears and, and, and there will be suffering and regret for all the things that we never said and never did when we should have, you know, no biting. And, um, you know, that's, that's the thing you've got to realise that you want to take the good parts, what you can, and 
let the rest of it go. You know, I still have great moments of anxiety and frustration and anger over some of the things that went wrong in my life that were unjustified, unfair and cruel. But they cheer you up without ever finding a resolution because the past can't be undone. So I say best not to dwell upon the negativity of the past, but try and find a way, if you're suffering, to find a few little good things in your life to plan for. And, you know, a dog is not a silly idea. They always love you. They're always great companions. Sometimes, as you can see, they can be mischievous and naughty. But on the whole, you know, they always love you when you come home, they they're always there for you, you know. I think it was um, Ken Alfred the Great who said, uh, the more I learn of humans, the more I like dogs. And it's true, I've, I've always had dogs all my life. They're, I love their loyalty and, and their companionship and their positivity. You know, they're always up, they're always happy. They don't get in grumpy, shitty moods, but mm, they can be naughty sometimes, can't you? But on the whole damn good creatures and good to have around and I always judge somebody by how they treat creatures lesser than themselves you know I find if if people are cruel to little creatures then they're generally cruel and mean-spirited people they might disguise it well but that's what they are deep down and I'm always surreptitiously peeking out the corner of my eye observing people and watching them I learned as a very young man, um, I used to read a lot on psychology and stuff like that and I used to read books about body language and how to read people and then I learned how to read people's faces, little twitches, little tells. Um, I became a brilliant poker player as a result. But your ability to read people was something that's, it's something that you can work on a lot and um, after a while, you, you hardly even have to speak to somebody to work out what sort of person they are. It's not hard. And it is an important thing that you learn to work out people, not so much judge, but work out people and think about, you know, is this person in my life good for me or is this person damaging? Often with mental health issues, with depression, go hand in hand things like alcoholism and drugs and a lot of the time that has a lot to do with the people around you who encourage you to to get pissed and misbehave and do bad things and often it's the influences around you so if you can get some good influences in your life and spend a bit more time with those good influences and you know, look at things and say, well, yeah, when I'm with these characters, I'm, I'm tending to get in a lot more trouble and I drink a lot more and I'm not happy and, you know, life just seems to be going down the toilet. Well, that's because it is. And, and the way to get around these problems is to uplift people and, and encourage people who uplift and support you and not people who hurt you and, and drag you down and make life difficult for you, you know. Even though it might be quite lonely, even though the only people you might have are, are, are just a bunch of bloody horrid people, well, sometimes it's better to distance yourself a bit from that rather than just persist with people who encourage you to lead a very destructive life, a very negative life. And the Dunedin study that they did, the psychological profiling of people for decades proves beyond all doubt that if you start badly you're going to end up surrounding yourself with bad people and the chances of you and your life going off the rails due to drugs and I'm not just talking smoking a bit of dope I'm, I'm talking pee and other nasties I'm talking um, you know serious alcohol abuse where you have periods of blackout and memory loss and you do terrible things that you don't even know what you've done um, that sort of out of control behaviour you know it's out of control and at that point if you don't have anyone to help and you really do want to change then that is the point to ask for help to seek professional help and say hey look 
life is going down the gurgler and I need a hand. And there are people who can and will help and they will show you things that you never considered before. Open your mind to some of the good things about yourself that you kind of left buried and forgotten to teach you to be a bit easier on yourself, to aim for positive things in your life, to make small achievements. They don't have to be big earth-changing things, they just have to make you feel better and put you in a bit of space, you know, physically, mentally, spiritually. And often it's the spirit that's hit the hardest. And I'm not saying run out there and join a church. It's not for everybody. But I mean appreciating the things in life around you, appreciating looking after little creatures and, and your ability to to care for creatures lesser than yourself makes you strong, you know. It makes you... Um, it gives you stamina in life. It enables you to get through the toughest of times because you can reflect upon the fact that, you know, you do decent things for creatures without anybody ever knowing and anybody ever asking. You do it because there's goodness in you and that that goodness in you can save your life because it's true of all of us. There is that goodness, that, that, that want and that desire to look after ourselves, those we love, if, if at all any. I mean, there's not many I love, but, you know, even just to look after small creatures who who need looking after. You know, they need someone big and strong to, to stand over and, and watch them and make sure that they live a good life and they're happy and they have companionship. You know, I hate to see dogs get fat and, and locked up and just be miserable and that's why I always take my dogs everywhere I go it's extremely limited and by the way the Department of Conservation I'd really appreciate it if you let me take this dog in with a muzzle on and a leash okay it's not everyone is stupid and useless this dog would love being in the bush but there's so many places I can't take her and that's a real shame you know because creatures like this they deserve to be in the open and you know, I don't like to think that I'd have to leave her with a friend or lock her in a kennel because I'm going to a national park where I'm not allowed a dog. That's That really sucks, okay, and it's something I would love to see changed. Well, time's rattling on. I just want to talk a little bit about the farming community today. Now, I'm not a farmer. In fact, when I was a lad, my father told me I would never earn a living using my hands. Now, had I have inherited what I might have, I would have been a gentleman farmer, never had to work, but enjoying the bucolic life, which I most certainly would have. But I am the son of a farmer. In fact, all, many of my family, two of the three branches of my family were farmers, and, um, you know, some of them were good, some of them were bloody useless and drank the farm, but all of them um, loved that life, and... You know, there's been quite a split between the townies and the country folk, between urban and rural, and the split is due to ignorance. I would very, very, very much like to see schools and whatnot taking kids onto farms and giving them the experience of what it is like to um, see a working farm, to be close to animals, to see how much farmers love their lands, love their animals and do so much for them, you know. Um, I don't like this this creation of a pariah, this bad guy, this cow's farting. Methane, mm, let me see from memory, makes up 0.0037 of 1% of the Earth's atmosphere. Not 1%, not 100ths, 37 ten-thousandths. Okay, so... You know, a lot of the time things get blown out of proportion. Someone whips up with a pot in a pan and starts banging and bashing and shouting and everyone leaps on board for fear of missing out or whatever it is. I don't know, honestly, I'm just in the queue because everyone else is queuing. That sort of herd mentality. Unfortunately, not enough people do their own research and 
you've got to do that and realise that farming in New Zealand is improving all of the time. Yeah, it's not perfect. Yeah, we've got a long, long way to go. And I would like to see loads of changes. I would like to see us run Dexters, which are little cows, half the size, and ground that's prone to pugging. I'd like to see a lot of the scarred hills retired into forestry. There's lots of changes I would like to see made, and I, they will happen, either voluntarily or they will be forced upon the farmers. But I really would like to see more diversity, more intelligence, different, smarter ways of moving in harmony with nature and enhancing what's there. And that, to me, is where it's at, OK? Town and country need to come together and work together instead of pitting ourselves against each other. And, you know, the wire wrapper and, and the Hawke's Bay, the big farming communities, very important farming communities for the country. It's not the Waikato or the Taranaki, but... Hey, look, you know, there's a lot of farmers here, a lot of wonderful people, and I'll tell you what, the further out from town you go, the better the people get, until you get right out into the boonies, people who live pretty much off the land, and they are the best folks of all. You never get to see them, but they're real fun and entertaining and very special individuals who add a flavour to New Zealand that is, is very special indeed, unique, but you know, a great, great part of the world to see if you ever get the chance. Um, the other thing too is that, you know, I would have thought by now, you know, we're well over a year into COVID and there's still people being told to wash their hands, people being given the sausage to vaccinate. The fact of the matter is we are all in this walk together. I look after you, you look after me, we look after the little creatures. Everybody needs to get vaccinated. It's not even really an option or a choice anymore. You just gotta, you just gotta do it for the whanau, you know, for the family, for our family, the greater family, the community. And I'd also like you to remember that there is media and there is media. Television, you know, the camera loves a tragedy. Camera. And, and TV tend to concentrate on the negative, whereas radio, especially community radio, tends to concentrate on the positive and, and the good things in life and the community and communicating, making positive change. And this is what we're all about. So I'd like to encourage people to engage more in that type of media where we're encouraging positive change with people and... Um, you know, making a difference. I don't have to do this job. I'm not paid to do it. Nobody asks me to do it. They allow me to do it, which is very kind. That is to say, our radio do. And the sponsors very, very kindly go out of their way to allow me to do this. So this is by mutual agreement. And I do it because I want to give back a little bit to my community who helped me out in my darkest times. And I've got to say, the real difference maker to me was the professionals I dealt with. You know, if you are, and I mean, who isn't suffering from anxiety, from stress, from depression? This has been super tough on us all. And really, you know, I, I think that we just need to talk amongst each other about how we're feeling. But we also need when we get really bad, to identify that problem and talk to a professional and get some real decent help, you know, something that, whoa, regular, whoa, whoa, don't be jumping from there. You know, get some real decent help and it makes a huge, huge difference. Professionals not only can analyse what you're saying, but they've heard this before, they've dealt with this hundreds and thousands of times before and they can make suggestions that other people will not give you approaches, give you little things that you can do to make progressive st steps towards wellness. And that's not easy. You know, sometimes you think it's going to work and then it slumps, it doesn't work. Hey, don't be chewing wires. No, no chewing wires. <laughs> Sorry, just try, try not to let my dog electrocute herself. It's hard doing a show when you've got a distraction like this. I'll tell you, she's a little wriggly, little wriggler, this one. But she's a good girl and she's willing, you know, and she'll never be a hunter, 
Um, you'll never be a rat, a little one. I'm afraid you're going to be a house dog. But she's never going to be a spoilt little pooch, you know. I'm not going to wrap this thing up in cotton wool. She'll be coming out in the forests where I can get her in um, to see what's out there. Dogs absolutely love the forest and camps, you know, camping out down by rivers and stuff for a week. Um, my old dog used to love that so much, especially sleeping in my sleeping bag. And, um, you know, I'll be taking her out on the boat. Um, sure hope you don't get seasick, Poppet, because if you do, oh, 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 things are going to be difficult for you. We might have to get you on the old sea legs, eh? Make sure you're not sick. Yeah, well, look, we're, we're rolling through to the end of another show, so I just want to say thank you very much to New Zealand On Air, to all the sponsors. We have a few, not many. The station always struggles and is always going cap in hand, Michael, asking, pleading for money, filling in forms and jumping through hoops. It's a terribly difficult job and it must be enormously frustrating for v Veronica and, and Michael here to, to have to fight so hard to do something for the community which is so valuable. You know, it seems to be that we place a lot of value on stupid and significant things and the good things, the really worthwhile things, you know, they, the people struggle so hard, they believe so much and their belief in what they're doing is probably all that really makes it happen. That's the glue that keeps it all together. Without that, there would just be silence and you wouldn't hear anything so you wouldn't know it wasn't there but the world would be a much much poorer place without places like Wairapa TV and, and Arrow Radio who give people like me an opportunity to have a voice on more of a not quite national scale but at least regional scale you know the good folks out on the carpet out there um, I don't know how far we go whether we get right up to him and Tangy and, and Otaki and whatnot, but I'm hoping why can I paramu paikokriki all round, um, Raumati. I hope you folks are doing good out there. I love that part of the coast. I fish out there a bit round uh, Carfidi and Mana and fishermen's and that out there. It's, I love the west coast, um, but I love the east coast too, you know. And going up the Hawke's Bay, I, one or t'other, you know equally beautiful spots and so many neat little spots if you get out of town. I mean, you know, it's very nice walking up the promenade and stuff in Napier and watching a game at McLean Park, but, you know, there's so many other neat little spots around to go to to have a cup of coffee and a pie. And what I really like to encourage people to do when they go on their holidays this year is to stop in the small towns, you know, do a tiki tour around the country and, um, you know, spread the love a little bit. Sprinkle a few dollars of cash on pies and coffee in little towns where you tan. Say good day to the locals. Engage and talk and let's find a new level of understanding these holidays that we never had before. Talk to people like real people. I mean, we're all in this together. We are all whanau, regardless of your colour or your creed or your belief. You know, the Muslims, the Christians, all of us are one. Everyone together. The Hindus, all of us. The Sikhs, they're all good people. You look at what they do. When the chips are down, they come out and help everybody. You know, and we don't care about the colour or background anymore. Polynesian, Maori, every manner of Pākehā, Chinese, all of us need to realise that divisions, they serve nobody. You know, we are one community, one walker. And if we paddle together forwards, then surely we have a bright future and, and, and we'll surely succeed in getting to our destination. But it's the journey. It's the journey that really counts. Our journey here and day, here, today, here and now, together, you and me, this is, this is what really matters today. You know, our journey together and just not being an a-hole to people, you know, just... Showing a bit of kindness, a little bit of consideration towards each other in the toughest of times, that's what really counts. That's what really matters. You know, how tough are you? Are you so tough that you can be kind to people when everyone else is being nasty? That's a tough guy. 
That's a real strong guy. That's a guy who won't be persuaded by anyone else, who has a mind of his own and a good heart. And we need a bit more of that. And we need to show our children some leadership and show them, you know, what's good in this world and what it is to be a good man. You know, good men need to show boys good leadership. And then they'll become good men themselves. You know, if we're just a-holes, guess what they're going to become? So that's my parting message, I guess, is to be that role model for the whanau, for the makapuna to look up to, um, be a role model for those young men who need it, and make it a better place by talking, by just you and me getting together and having a cup of tea. It's me for another week. Thank you very much for tuning in. I have a, a broken heart having lost Marjorie, but a young one has come into my life, so we'll see where we go. Here's to the future. Hey, pup? Here's to the future. Bye.